Former President Olusegun Obasanjo has thrown his weight behind diaspora voting in Nigeria. The former president stressed that he sees no reason why the National Assembly cannot amend the relevant laws to make it pos possible for Nigerians in diaspora to vote. The former president was speaking when he was visited by the chairman of Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abiket Dabiri Eriwa, and some staff of the commission in Abelkota. Mrs. Dabiri Eriwa intimated President Obasanjo of some of the achievements of NITCOM since its establishment. I want to thank you. You started the idea of having Nigerians in the diaspora all come together and form an organization called the Nigeria Diaspora Organization. And the idea was to be able to tap all these enormous um, resources, human talent that we have in the diaspora. And this was built on subsequently, and today we have a diaspora commission. And I'm also glad to let you know, sir, that some African countries are already visiting us to see how we're um, harnessing our own diaspora. We've had Tanzania, Namibia, Ethiopia, and a few others. And uh, the organization of um, African Caribbean Pacific, we're actually in Abuja to also see how they can start working with the diaspora. Get yourself organized and whatever you can contribute internally. We shouldn't allow a few Nigerians to give all Nigerians a bad name. I remember when apartheid was uh, removed in uh, South Africa. The president called me and said, look, we want Nigerians, uh, university lecturers and professors to come to South Africa. And many of them were. All that we needed to do, if, it's a, uh, if there's need for constitutional agreement, simple thing, not change, uh, amend the constitution that Nigerians in diaspora will vote through the Nigerian embassy. The market women leaders and village community heads in Jewaland have declared their support for the All Progressives Congress uh, presidential candidate Bola Tinobu and Ogun West senatorial candidate Solomon Adiola. The Ulu of Ilaro and Paramount ruler of Jewaland also called on Yewa natives to invest in the development of the, er of the area which is currently in serious need of infrastructural development. TVC News, Kazim Olawe reports. The atmosphere looks more like a political rally as residents of Ilaro and other neighboring communities in Yewa land came together to receive the Ilaro City Pavilion facilitated by Senator Solomon Adeola, an indigenous of Ilaro in Ogun West Senatorial District. They adorned the arena with images of the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu, and other candidates of the party in the state. The residents were full of appreciation for what Senator Adiola has done for them. Aside from the pavilion, buses were distributed to different associations and electricity transformers were distributed to communities in Yuwa land. Tables and chairs were also donated to schools to support education in the area. I'm elated. I'm elated because this is what should happen for a person who is a, a very kind giver and who loves his people like Yayi. Now we have venues for meetings, for events that people can easily assess and use for community organizing activities. So this pavilion will certainly help us in that direction. The Director General of the National Productivity Center, Abuja, was also in attendance and urged residents to make good use of what was donated to them. The, first, the second phase of this project will commence shortly. I, I want to congratulate you all for the opportunity of having a song like Senator Solomon Adiola. Market women leaders and village community heads in Yewa land also used the opportunity
to reaffirm their support for the All Progressive Congress Ogun West Senatorial District candidate and promise to re elect Governor Dabo Abiodun and vote massively for Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinobu as the president of Nigeria. Kazimolowe, TVC News, Ilaro. And in Kano State, senior police officers from the Northwest Zone have converged to discuss election security matters in the region. The workshop discussed ways to enhance national security capacity for a credible election process in Nigeria. Ibrahim Asa reports. The 2023 general election is approaching. Political activities have since commenced at various quarters of the country. The Nigeria Police Force feels senior officers need to be trained on more skills on how to manage the elections. The aim is to ensure the elections are rank or free. In Kano, police officers from Northwest converged to participate in a workshop titled The 2023 General Elections Enhancing National Security Capacity for a Secure and Credible Electoral Process in Nigeria. Uh, the essence is to prepare police officers uh, so as to be able to manage our uh, uh, security challenges. Uh, before, during, or after the elections. We still have about six months to the elections, but the earlier we are able to do it, the better. And uh, most importantly, this one we are doing, we are doing it for officers at a level that they can cascade it down, they can bring it down to, you know, the, the uh, area command level, to the divisional police. Of, form of training. In, yeah, training, training, press something. So that's why we are starting early. I believe this workshop is going to uh, bring a milestone to ensuring a credible elections from 2023 as uh, signaled by the past two elections recently held that of Ekiti Anushun. As the elections approach, there are loads of expectations from the police. But police officials are optimistic with the recent outcome of Ekiti and Oshun State's election, the 2023 general elections would be credible free and fair. Ibrahim Isa, TVC News, Kanu. Let's take you to Kaduna State, where the federal government has promised to build the capacity of managers of correctional service facilities to repel attacks. The Minister of Interior, Rauf Arigwashala, who was the reviewing officer at the passing out parade of 102 assistant superintendents of correction in Kaduna, says more weapons will be made available to men of the service. Lupia Som reports. The Minister of Interior, who is the reviewing officer, inspects the personnel cadets of the Correctional Service College on parade. After six months of training, 102 of them are now qualified to be commissioned into the officer cadre of the service. The Nigerian Correctional Service provides custodian and non custodian services to promote public protection. Despite being declared a red zone in April 2021, its facilities have been repeatedly attacked and inmates freed. The latest being the Kuje incident in Abuja. The minister announces that going forward, there will be an increase in the weapon and armaments available to correctional facility managers. This is in addition to capacity building trainings in weapon handling to repel such attacks. We are fortifying the provisions, infrastructural provisions buildings and salt provision to make it very difficult for anybody to even violate the perimeter of our facilities. Raising the capacity of managers of our consular facilities to on their own stand up and defend their facilities. That is one. Two, we are mobilizing support of other security agencies, particularly the military, to reinforce the defense and security of our facilities. And we are equally increasing the weapon and armaments available to the corrections. He has also charged correctional service personnel to ensure that no inmate is abused or made to suffer non-statutory punishments while in custody. The personnel cadets are urged to be diligent, patriotic and disciplined in the discharge of their duties. Lupe Asom, TVC News, Kaduna.